Good morning. Good morning. Let's try that again. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Amen. One good one good morning. <laughs> Amen. Two good mornings. It counts for two, right? <laughs> I know I was a bit uh, frustrated uh, last week, or no, two weeks ago, right? Uh, we had our church sign that we had uh, spent some money on, we had put it up there. It was on a, one of those real estate signs, and it's, you know, the ones that say for sale. And we had our church hours. It says, you know, Saturday, Sabbath service at 11 a.m. You know, a lot of people don't know that we have church on Saturday, right? So we have to let them know. And that's why we did the sign for people to know that we have church here on Saturdays. Um, and it's also word of mouth. So it's up to us to let people know, whether it's on Facebook, whether it's on, um, I was talking to Carlos and uh, Rick. We're talking about uh, maybe doing some posters and asking different businesses if they'll allow us to put them up there. So when people are at a restaurant or at a clothing store or wherever they're at, they're able to see the poster there. But we have to ask permission. We can't just go post it up there because they'll just tear it down, right? And uh, I want to I want to take uh, tell uh, Carlos and Reina, thank you so much for that banner. Uh, they paid for that banner that y'all saw up at the front. Uh, we will have to take it down after we have church because uh, it might go missing just like the sign did. <laughs> but uh, at least right now as people are driving by, hopefully they're looking at the signs. We have the little yard signs there in the front as well. Uh, we want to let people know, There's, you'd be surprised there's how many people out there know about the Sabbath. You know, and some of them they know about the Seventh-day Adventist Church. They know about the Messianic Jewish Church, which they also keep the Sabbath. But they don't know that there's other Christian churches that keep the Sabbath as well. So we need to let them know one way or another, right? So um, let us pray for that, that uh, we uh, that, that happens and people are aware of that. But it's up to us. We want to share with them. Reina and Carlos, thank you. Uh, that was, you know, that was quite a bit of money for that banner. Banners are not cheap. Thank you for paying for that. And um, we know that God will bless you guys. And He's already blessing you guys. We are a church. The Bible says, wherever there's two or three gathered in my name. Wherever there's two or three gathered in my name, there's the church right there. So if there's three people two or three people praying together, that's the church. It's not the building. Of course, we use the building to come in together. We need a building to come in together, whether it's at a house or in a building. But you and I make the church. You and I make the church. There's more than two people here, right? There's more than three people here. So we are a church. And we are to represent the church of God. Amen. Whatever God calls us to do, let us uh, follow him all the way. I'm going to do something a little different this morning. How many of y'all believe in the power of prayer? Amen. How many of y'all going through things? I think we all go through things. Um, some of us, we want. We want our family, our kids our husband, wife, our mom and dad. We want as many people to, to follow God because we're not going to be here forever, right? We're not going to be here forever. And it makes us sad that, you know, we try to invite them to church or Bible study and nobody wants to come. Or they tell you they're, they're going to come and they don't come, right? Or they might come one time, like, okay, I already did you a favor. <laughs> But you know what? Um, Y'all don't get discouraged. Don't get discouraged because keep teaching them what the Bible says is going to happen in the last days. Keep telling them that in the last days there's going to be persecution. There's going to be Sunday laws. There's going to be the mark of the beast. There's going to be uh, people attacking us. 
you know what? The more you show them from the Bible, and don't get tired of telling them, the more you tell them, one day when they start to see all these things happening, guess who they're going to run to? To you. To you. They're going to say, what you were telling me, even though I didn't want to go to church, even though I didn't want to study the Bible, it's happening now. I want to know now. And there you go. You planted a seed, right? So don't get discouraged if people are not coming to church. Don't get discouraged if people are not here. You keep praying for them and you keep telling them. We are to not lose hope on people. I know it took me about, it took me about, I don't know, a good three, four years before I seriously decided to follow God all the way. My sister Amanda can tell me. <laughs> she was young, but uh, I know my sister Sylvia, she remembers a little bit more. But uh, I was, I mean, people didn't give up on me. People were giving me Bible study. People were praying for me. And uh, and I, I would reject things, especially the Sabbath. Especially when they showed me about the Sabbath, I didn't want nothing to do with it. Stop eating pork? That was easy for me. I, I was burned out on meat anyways. We ate pork chops like they were going out of style. <laughs> uh, giving up a lot of other things was easy for me. Um, but... Keeping the Sabbath holy, I didn't want to accept that. I was like, well, why does the majority of the people go to church on Sunday? You know, on Saturday is the day to go out to the flea market, walk around, have fun, go buying, go shopping. But uh, it took me a little while. It took me a couple of, about three years, three or four years before I fully accepted it. So, y'all, if people didn't give up on us, if God didn't give up on you, you don't give up on your family and friends. Don't give up on them. Keep praying for them. But I want to pray. I want to come. Uh, I want us to come up here to the front, and all of us pray together. Um, we're gonna go in this direction. If somebody can just touch Brother Tate on his shoulder, and uh, we're gonna pray. And um, if you guys want to be open about anything you're facing and you want prayer over. You can be open with us, but if you don't want to be open, if you just want to just say, I just want prayer, that's fine as well. Brother Rick, I would like for you to come up here as well. Prayer will change things. I'm going to put the mic down. I'm going to pray. If anybody else wants to pray along, y'all can. If not, we'll just... Um, is there anything that somebody wants us to pray about? I've got a sentence, man. You're going to prison. Okay. Anybody else? I'm with him. Okay. I, um, I want to pray from the direction of this church and what God has in store for us. I want to pray for my family, my friends, that they get to know God, mm -hmm. that they come to God. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? For Sergio. Mm -hmm. For Sergio? Okay. For our families, okay. my, my kids, Okay. grandkids. All right. Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. We come humbly before you. Lord, you hear the prayers of each person here today. Heavenly Father, we know the, the pain of a father and a, and a mother when their son or daughter is going through things, Lord. And we pray for Brother Rick, his son, Travis, that, uh, that you be with him, Lord. Reveal yourself to him, Lord. Help him, Lord, to get away from that crooked path. Lord, and we know that you're able to speak to him and, and help him, Lord. Open his eyes, bless his life, make a miracle in his life. We strongly believe in that, and we all come in prayer for him. Heavenly Father, we want to pray for um, Sergio, Lord. I know that he's a good man. 
Lord, speak to his heart, soften his heart. Help him to see that uh, your way is the best way. And that you can help him in whatever, whatever things he may be going through, Lord. We know that you're able to heal his heart and help him. Lord, I want to pray for um, Leanne's family, my family, Reina's, and Carlos's family, and friends. That they come to know you, Lord. That you speak to their heart and they come to come close to you, Lord, and, and draw closer to you, Lord. I don't know how you would do it. I don't know if you would speak to them through a sermon, a song, or somebody else talking to them, Lord. But we ask that you do that, Lord. We humbly ask that, that you come and speak to them, Lord. Lord, um, there's many more prayers that I maybe forgot to mention, Lord. But you know the, the, the prayer that each person has here. And we know that you're able to answer them, Lord, according to your will. And we trust that you will, Lord. Lord, it's, it's heavy in my heart, Lord, to pray in the direction that you want us to go with this church, Lord. Whether you want us to fully bless us with having this church as our church, Lord. Or if you have something else in store for us, we gladly accept that as well, Lord. All we want to do is preach your truth, Lord. And we want to guide people into your truth. So we ask that uh, that you hold the devil back and the enemies back, Lord. And that uh, you allow blessing in this church and your congregation as well. We thank you, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Cool. Uh, you wanted to pray? Samuel, right? You're Samuel? All right. Samuel wants to pray. church up. Amen. God is going to fill this church. God is going to, whether it's this church or another building, God is going to fill it up. And we're going to proclaim the gospel. Amen. We're going to share the gospel and we need to be a lighthouse. That's what the name of this church is, Lighthouse. Uh, I'm sure most of y'all know the purpose of a lighthouse is for when uh, the boats or the ship, ships were coming in the ocean, on the sea. Um, and it would get really foggy. It was hard for them to see where they needed to go. So the lighthouse was always on. And they were able to see and get to their destination. Jesus Christ is the lighthouse. Amen. God is the lighthouse. And, um, let me get some tissue. Jesus Christ is the lighthouse. And um, we need him. We need to keep our eyes on Jesus. Amen. And in order for us to know where we're heading. Especially in this dark world. And the things that are going on around us. Um, I was talking to a brother at work. His name is Michael. And uh, he told me something that really opened my eyes. He says, he reminded me in the Bible that when we're going through sadness, when we're going through doubt, when we're going through, through anything, right? That in the book of Psalms, it says to praise God. 
There's power when we praise God. I don't know what, I mean, only God knows, right? Only God knows what's best for us. But when we meditate upon the Lord and when we praise God with music and we elevate our, our heart and our, and our singing to Him, God will remove that doubt, that sadness, that worry, whatever it is. So let us praise God. Let us praise God with a meaningful heart. It's not just us singing, but mean it from your heart. I don't know if you've ever heard a song, especially a love song, and, uh, and it touched you, right? If we can be romantic with our partner, shouldn't we be more romantic and loving with God the Father? So Let us bow our heads. Heavenly Father, we invite your Holy Spirit here with us today. Lord, thank you for allowing us to be here and worship you, Lord. Lord, we want to thank you for everything that you do for us, even though sometimes we take it for granted, Lord. Thank you for giving us life. Thank you for blessing us with family and friends. And thank you for blessing us with the church family, Lord. We thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. You may be seated. Happy Sabbath, everyone. Happy Sabbath. All right. I think we're going to have to rename this church to the um, Reina and Carlos Church. <laughs> Got all the family here in the house. Amen. Good job, though. Thank you, guys. God is awesome. God is awesome, right? God is good, right? All the time. God is good. At this time, we're going to collect tithes and offerings, and I'm going to have my lovely wife pass this um, tray around. You know that God gives us... Um, All right, um, my wife just told me that... Uh, we're going to try to have something for the kids uh, whenever she's here on Saturdays. I, I was going to tell you, um, Bobby has a story for you. Okay. All right. All right. He has a story. He can tell it to the kids right now. All right. I'll have him give the children's story then. Um, starting next Saturday, and only when we have our daughter Vanessa with us, because we have her every other Saturday. We're going to have children's church downstairs, all right? And um, it's going to start immediately when the sermon starts right here. We'll be able to have the children go downstairs and she'll have church with them downstairs. Uh, it's like, it's like that, um, because some of these topics, some of these sermons are a little bit stronger for the kids. So there has to be messages for the kids. So our daughter Vanessa will be doing that when she's here with us. So it'll be next Saturday. So bring your children, and um, she'll have a children's church downstairs, and we'll set it up. All right, let us pray. Heavenly Father, we want to ask a blessing for the money that was given and, with the, and the tithes that were returned, Lord. We ask that it goes for your use, Lord, and that you bless it, Lord. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray that uh, we get somebody that knows how to play the piano because we need somebody to be playing the piano as we call children's, you know, the children up here or have a, anything that's going on. So if y'all know somebody that knows how to play the piano or keyboard, let them know. <laughs> let them know. At this time, we're going to have a children's story. And I would like to have all the children come up here and sit up here. There's a lot of children today. Come on, Sergio. You're still you're still a young man. <laughs> He's a teenager. All right, y'all sit up right here. Y'all sit down right here.
We have a lot of children today. All glory to God. Okay, my y'all look at the camera. My, my wife's gonna take a picture of y'all real quick. Amen. Now, Samuel, you wanted to tell the children's story? All right, come up here. What you got for us? one of the commandments. Any of y'all? Love. Love? Part of it? Yes, that's part of it. Any of y'all know any of the other Ten Commandments? The first one says, Thou shalt not have any gods before me. The Sabbath. The Sabbath commandment. There you go. That's commandment number four. Did you know that there's a commandment out of the Ten Commandments? Come, and y'all want to guess which commandment it is? It says to honor your father and mother. What commandment number that one is? Number two? No. You said number four? No. No. Anybody else? One. One? No. Nope. <laughs> no. Nope. No. Nope. Pretty close. You said five. She said five. Come here. <laughs> Tell everybody your name. Janessa. Janessa. This is our lovely niece, Janessa. She said commandment number five, and she's right. So give her a round of applause. All right. Sit down. All right. Well, commandment number five says, Honor your father and mother that your days may be here long on the earth. So God in his Ten Commandments says that we have to obey and listen to our mom and dad, right? But it's not just listening to our mom and dad. We also need to listen to anybody older than us, right? We have to have respect for our teachers at school. How many of y'all go to school here? <laughs> All right. How many of y'all want to be a teacher one day? Any of y'all? No. <laughs> I said, I don't want school no more. <laughs> you want to be in the Navy? Awesome. I want to be an astronaut or a musician. Astronaut or musician? Cool. Well, you can practice playing music up here if you ever want to. Oh, you do? Cool. Maybe she can come play up here for us. My mom said. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, not up. No. Why? Any of y'all play an instrument? Anybody else? You do? What do you play? I play the piano. The piano. All right. You want to learn to play the piano? Maybe we can have somebody give us classes here on how to play the piano. 
We can look into that, right? <laughs> All right. I can't, I can't play an instrument. Guess what my favorite instrument is? What? Radio. <laughs> that too. But my favorite instrument? Do what? You said guitar? Nope. You said a flute? Harp? Nope. <laughs> can y'all picture me playing the harp? <laughs> Drums? That's my second favorite. What's my first favorite instrument? Piano. You said piano? No. Violin. Violin? No. I don't even think they would guess it. I'll let my wife tell you. An accordion. The accordion. Do y'all know what an accordion is? All right. I know what that means. I'm straight up Mexican. <laughs> I love the accordion. I love to hear the accordion play. I like the drums and I also like the bass guitar. The bass guitar is pretty neat. I like the, the sounds that it makes. But back to commandment number five. God says that we are to obey our father and mother and our elders, right? That means they've lived life, they've gone through things, and they know what's best for us, right? So is it important for us to behave in church? <laughs> so we, we can't be running around in church We can't be jumping up and down unless, unless the preacher tells you to jump up and down when we're singing But other than that, we are not to be running in the church and being real loud, right? We are to listen to our mom and dad But also when your mom and dad tells you at, and at home Maybe they want you to help out at home, right? Let's sit down. We, our parents ask us to help them out at home, right? With chores and stuff, right? How many of y'all th are in charge of throwing the trash away? Uh, I help you sometimes. <laughs> what about washing dishes? So she does. <laughs> My mom doesn't even ask her. Oh, wow. I hate doing dishes. I'd rather throw the trash away. But you know, even us as adults, even us as adults, uh, we have to listen to somebody too. Guess who that is? God. Us as adults, us as big people, we gotta answer to God too. We gotta listen to somebody too. Just like you guys have to listen to your parents and your teachers and anybody in charge over you, we also have to we also have to ask God what He wants us to do. But also God wants you to listen to God as well, right? So let us be good children, right? And obey our parents and follow what our parents have for us, okay? And God will bless you. All right, let us, uh, I'm going to ask each of y'all y'all's name. Y'all want to sit down? Y'all say y'all's name. Amen. Solomon. Solomon. Daniel. Daniel. <laughs> right. Right. Sylvester. Sylvester. How old are you, Sylvester? Nine. Nine. Hey, Shad. Say your name. Xander. 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 Samuel. Samuel. He's gonna be a preacher one day. Janessa. Janessa. Jalisa. You wanna come up here? The, the microphone don't reach. <laughs> Giselle. Sergio. Sergio. Come here, Sergio. I'm going to put you on the spot. Come here, man. That's right. How old are you? 14. 14. He's a teenager. Are you driving already? A little bit. A little bit? Are you showing him how to drive? He knows a little bit. All right. I'm still scared. <laughs> He's going to wreck the car um, one day. What school do you go to? Capra. Cap Rock, that's where I went to. You look over there, you might see my name card over there. <laughs> now, do you like school? No. I don't either. <laughs> I'm going to school right now and I don't like it. I'm going to college. I'm 44 years old and I'm going to college. I'm probably one of the oldest ones in there. <laughs> when I came in, they thought I was a teacher. <laughs> Um, 
so what did you think about this uh, story? Has a good message. Has a good message. So it's important for us to listen to our parents, right? But most importantly, listen to who? To God. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Sergeant. Let's give him a round of applause. All right. Let us come up here and let us pray. Let's come together and we're going to pray. All right. Anybody else want to pray besides Samuel? I know he's always ready to pray. You want to pray? You don't know how? Do you want me to show you how? No? Okay. Yeah, come up here. We're going to pray. Anybody else want to pray besides Samuel? Okay, come on, Samuel. Or pre preacher Samuel. Y'all hold hands. All right, you're going to hold the mic and pray. Okay, close your eyes. Thank you. Children's Church downstairs. Thank you, everybody. How many of y'all were blessed last Sabbath with Brother Isaiah and his music and ministry? I was blessed. I don't know about you guys. Um, I want us to... I know um, there's quite a bit more people that I know that we can invite. And um, there's different styles of music. I like all kinds of music. I like hip hop, I like Spanish music, I like R&B, of course all Christian music. Next Sabbath I'm gonna um, I'm gonna present a special message so if y'all can invite as many people as y'all can uh, it's gonna be in regards to music. Did y'all know, I'm just gonna throw a little hint in there, did y'all know the Bible doesn't say listen to Christian music? With that said, y'all come next Saturday and we're going to see what the, the Bible has to say about music. All right. So y'all invite as many people as y'all can. And we will all be surprised what the Lord has for us uh, in regards to music. So um, with that said, also, uh, I know quite a bit of uh, art, music artists that I'd like to bring up here. If y'all want to suggest, you know, somebody that y'all know as well, let me know. Um, of course, I would like to meet with them first because uh, we do believe certain truths in the Bible, amen? And we got to be careful what we present up here. But with that said, I mean, God, God loves for us to praise His name with music, amen? But most importantly, with our lives and the way we live for Him. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I want to thank You for this day. Lord, as I present Your message, help me to um, teach and preach what you want me to preach, Lord. Also, pierce our hearts, not just the people listening here, but also myself, Lord. Help us to be your children. Help us to be guided by you. Help us to be guided by your Holy Spirit and fill this place with your Holy Spirit, Lord. That there is no room for the enemy. That there is no room for any demonic force in this place. But only your presence, Lord, only your Holy Spirit. Help me to uh, say the words that you want me to say, Lord. We thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 This morning I was telling my wife, well, there's two messages that I was wanting to present. <clears throat> and I wasn't sure which one. So I just prayed and asked the Lord and uh, he gave me the, 
he, he told me, well, I want you to preach on this sermon. The title of my message today is called, <clears throat> it's called Seven Women and One Man. Amen. I know I've shared this uh, message before at another church, but I wanted to share it again. And I want us to, um, I want us to, to focus on what God has for us in his word. Amen. We need the Bible. We're a Bible-based church, and we need God's Word to speak to us. Amen? Amen. amen. I got one amen. <laughs> All right. How many of you have ever heard of the name Zion? <clears throat> All right. What do y'all think it means? There's a, there's a lot of hymns. There's a lot of uh, Christian music, praise and worship songs. That always say Zion. We're going to Zion. The, the name Zion means holy hill or high ridge. Later on in this holy hill, because how many of y'all have heard that God says, I am on my holy mountain? You remember when Moses was called up before the Lord, Moses had to go up this mountain. And on the top of that mountain, guess who was there? God. The presence of God was there. It says there was lightning and thunder and, and just loud noises. The presence of God is powerful. Amen? So the presence of God was on the top of this mountain. Amen? So God refers to Zion as a holy hill. It was this hill up in, you know, we're pretty flat here in Amarillo, but if you can find a hill, just picture on top of that hill, a holy place. Amen? And that's where Zion was. Later, a city was built called Zion on that holy hill. Of course, it was commanded by God that Zion would be there. But it was from God. Anything that's from God is what? Holy. Anything that is from God is pure. Amen? Later on, the city of Jerusalem would be built around Zion. That's why Jerusalem means the city of God. Amen? Amen? We have old Jerusalem right now in the Middle East. But God says, I have a new Jerusalem for you. It's a city in heaven that he's going to bring down to this earth. So we don't have to look to old Jerusalem now. We look to the new Jerusalem that God has promised for us. Amen. He says, I go and prepare a place for you. And I, I make plenty of rooms for you. When I come back, I will take you with me. That city, the New Jerusalem, is up in heaven. But let's go back to the city of Zion on this holy hill. Let's go to Psalms 48, 1, verse, all the way to verse 3. Psalms 48. Psalms 48, 1 through 3. It says, Great is the Lord. And great to be praised in the city of our God and his holy mountain. Beautiful in elevation, the joy of the whole earth. In Mount Zion, on the sides of the north, in the city of the great king. God is in her palaces. He is known as her refuge. Exactly what we just talked about, right? In his holy Mountain, his holy hill. Zion is right there, the city of God. Amen? The city of God, Zion. What is the daughter of Zion? Because every time God talks about his city, whether it's the New Jerusalem or Old Jerusalem, or any time he talks about a church, or anytime he talks about um, his place of worship, God always refers to 
as a woman. God always refers to Zion as a woman. God always refers to Jerusalem as a woman. So if we're a church here today, we all represent, I mean, not, don't get my words twisted. Spiritually, we all represent God's wife. The bride of Christ. We all represent the bride of Christ. He is the head we follow, right? That's why God instituted marriage that way. The husband is the head, the woman follows. Amen? But a woman only follows a Christian man, not just any man. Because if you follow a worldly man, there's destruction there. <laughs> but it's always referred to as a woman. So the city of Zion is a woman. All right? Keep that in mind. The city of Jerusalem is a woman, spiritually and symbolically. It's not literally a woman. It's spiritually and symbolically referred to as a woman. That's why it says here, it says here, he is known, he is known as her refuge. That's why it says her refuge, the city of Zion. All right, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 2. The Bible is awesome. There is so much beautiful things to learn in the Bible that it, it, it amazes me all the time. Jeremiah chapter 6, verse 2. I have likened, what does it say here? I have likened the daughter of Zion to a lovely and delicate woman. Right here. First we read that Zion is a holy mountain, a city on a holy mountain. Now it's saying that Zion is like a lovely and delicate woman. Amen? And that's for us men to consider this. Women are more delicate than we are. We can hurt their feelings. They can hurt our feelings as well, but we can hurt their feelings even more. The Bible says that the woman is the weaker vessel. Amen? So we got to be cautious in how we treat our wives. How we treat our daughters, right? I know that sometimes I was a little bit more stern with my son than I was with my daughter. But yet I was still stern with both of them. But women and girls are more delicate. The Bible says, I have likened, he says, I have compared Zion to a beautiful, delicate, and lovely woman. Amen? So this city, Zion, this place called Zion, or, the New, or Jerusalem, is compared to a woman, or God's followers. If we are the bride of Christ, what are we? We're followers of Christ. Amen? We are to be a delicate and lovely woman. Notice they didn't just say, just delicate. Feel bad for me because I'm a woman. Feel bad for me because I'm a woman. No, it's saying also lovely. Are you a lovely woman? Are you easy to be around with? Are you loving towards your husband and your children or strangers? So God realizes that we're as a woman, you're delicate, but we are also to be lovely. But again, we are the bride of Christ. So this refers to us men too. Amen? Amen. We are the bride of Christ, so we are to be a delicate and a lovely woman. We are to be... Show love to people. Show compassion to people. We are to be easy to get along with. Amen? We are to represent Zion. So the daughter of Zion is compared to a lovely and delicate woman. God's church. It's us. So anytime we read Zion or Jerusalem, put your name right there. Put your name right there. So when God is talking to Zion... Or Jerusalem? Okay, God, you're talking to me as well. Amen? 
Because if we claim to be the church, if we claim to be followers of God, then God is talking to us. Amen? Amen. What is the, again, what does the, the Bible tell us as the, as the bride of Christ, how we should be? Let's go to Proverbs 31. Proverbs 31. Proverbs, Proverbs 31, 28. For you men that are single, for you men that are single, and you're looking for a, a Christian woman or a woman that follows God, compare her to these Bible verses. Proverbs 31, 28 through 31. And it reads, Her children rise up and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many daughters have done well, but you excel them all. Charm is deceitful, beauty is passing. But a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. What does it say right here? But a woman who fears the Lord shall be praised. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let her own words praise her in the gates. It says that our beauty is going to pass. We're not always going to be looking like we're in our 20s, right? <laughs> we're not always going to be... <laughs> just like, we're not always going to look how we hope to look like, right? We're all going to get older. So it says beauty is passing. Our beauty will pass. Well, most, what is most important, a woman who fears the Lord. A woman who follows God. That is more beautiful in the eyes of the Lord. That is more beautiful in the eyes of the Lord than your looks. Amen? Of course, we all want to look the best that we can, right? I mean, we try to do different hairstyles and we, you know, for the girls' makeup and the guys' different hairstyles, dress different. We all want to dress as nice as we can. We all want to look as good as we can. But God says all that will pass. What's most important, do you fear the Lord? Do you follow God? That's what God is telling us. And it's telling us here, this is advice for women. For a godly woman. This is advice for a godly woman. But again, we are the bride of Christ. So this is also advice for us men. On how we are to follow God. Amen. It's called a virtuous wife. Again, the, the title of my sermon is called Seven Women and One Man. That title kind of sounds kind of bad right there. <laughs> A lot of men might be like, whoa, that'd be nice, seven women. Solomon had, what, over a hundred, five hundred, I don't know, wives. But um, he didn't know the Lord, or he rebelled against the Lord, and he did those things. But the title of my sermon says, Seven Women and One Man. What do I mean by seven women and one man? Well, the Bible will tell us. The Bible will tell us. In Isaiah chapter 3, verse 16, the book of Isaiah, right in the middle of the Bible, kind of in the middle of the Bible. The book of Isaiah chapter 3. And this title, I did not make it up, it's in the Bible. Isaiah chapter 3, verse 16. All the way to verse 26. Moreover, the Lord says, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty. Haughty doesn't mean like they're hot. <laughs> like a woman's hot. It means they're rebellious. That's what it means. The word haughty means rebellious. Because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk without stretched necks. 
and wanting eyes. It's like lust. They're, they're, they're walking around wanting other men. Walking and mincing as they go, making and jingling with their feet. Therefore the Lord will strike with the scab, the crown of their head and the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will uncover their secret parts. And in that day the Lord will take away the finery and the jingling, the jingling anklets and the scarves and the crescents and the pendants and the bracelets and the veils, the headdresses and the leg ornament, ornaments and the headbands and the perfume boxes and the charms and the rings and the nose jewels and the festal apparel and the mantles and the outer garments and purses and mirrors and fine linen and turbans and robes. And also it shall be, instead of a sweet smell, there shall be a stench. Instead of a sash, a rope. Instead of well said hair, baldness. Instead of rich rope, a girding of sackcloth. And branding instead of beauty. Your men shall fall by the sword and your mighty in the war. Her gates shall lament and mourn and shall be desolate, shall sit on the ground. You might be like, what in the world is this talking about? <laughs> we just started reading, it says, because the daughters of Zion are haughty, they're rebellious. What did we read a while ago that Zion represents? God's people, right? These women right here, they let beauty and their possessions go to their head. The jewelry that they wore, the, the expensive purses that they had, their fancy hair, their fancy clothing, all these things allowed them to distract them from God. And God says, I will remove all that from you. How many of y'all know that God still punishes? God punishes. Yes, He does. God gives us grace. God gives us grace, meaning He will forgive you for anything. But if He sees that we're going in the wrong direction and we're not listening, we're being rebellious, God can punish us to try to get our attention and back on His path. Amen? How many of y'all spank y'all's kids? The Bible says spank your kids. Why? I used to tell my kids, uh, I'm only spanking you because I love you. <laughs> I don't know, have you ever told your kids that? We're, we don't want them to go in the wrong directions, right? We want them to listen to us. God does the same thing with us. We're His children. We are His children. He's trying to get our attention, amen? These women rebel against God, but He calls them Zion. So it's God's people. They're rebelling against God. And he's telling them, instead of all these things, nice things, it says these women walked around with wanton eyes. What does that mean? They weren't satisfied with the husband that they had at home. Instead, they were trying to flirt with other men. They were trying to get the attention from other men. Again, it's not just for women, this message. It's for us. If we're Zion as the church, this message is for us too. Us as men, we should not look and desire another woman. Be content with what God has given you. Amen? It says they walked around with wanting eyes, seeing what else they could get. Flirting eyes. You know, Have you ever heard of that? Flirt, flirting eyes. And this refers to sin, not just sex, not just cheating on your spouse, but this refers to sin as well. Wanting to sin, wanting to do what everybody else is doing, wanting to get drunk with everybody, wanting to do drugs, wanting to talk the way everybody talks, you know, cursing up a storm and, and just talking down on people, talking about people, getting revenge on people. That's what God is saying. Don't do those things. You're pure. You are my child. 
don't want what everybody else has. Whether it be their possessions, their house, their cars, their girlfriend or boyfriend or husband or wife. A lot of us covet. A lot of us want what somebody else has. God say, no, I have what belongs to you. I have, if you don't have a husband, if you don't have a wife, I have that person for you. But I want you to be pure. <laughs> I want you to be pure before my eyes. I want you to follow me. You know, me and my wife, we give a, we try to give advice to people. But you know, whether it be marriage counseling, whether it be uh, how to get along with your family or whatever, the number one thing we tell people is put God first. Put God first. But what does it mean, put God first? It can mean a lot of different things to people. Some people, it might mean, will come to church every Saturday. Or read my Bible every day. No, God, putting God first is how we live for God. That's putting God first. When you put God first and say, God, I'm going to follow you. I don't care what everybody else is doing. I'm going to follow you the best that I can. Because we're not perfect. But God wants the best from you. God wants you to acknowledge where you're failing. And say, okay, Lord, I'm failing right here. Help me to follow you. Help me to serve you and follow you all the way. Amen? I don't care what my best friends are doing. I don't care what my relatives, my sister or brothers are doing. You know, it's easy for us to want to follow those things. I get, I, I get sometimes even tempted to, to want to go drink or go party or go do those things. But God said, no, you're not that person anymore. You are my child. When we put God first, God will bless you. God will bless you, not just with material things, but with, with that peace, that peace in your heart. And most importantly, at, at the end of our lives, that crown of life. Amen? That crown of life that we get to live forever. How many of y'all want to be with your children in heaven? How many of you want to see your father and mother in heaven with you? How many of you want to see your husband and wife with you? <laughs> we all want to see everybody as we can in heaven, right? On my worst enemy, I don't wish destruction on my worst enemy. I even want my worst enemy in heaven. Amen? So we are to share the gospel with everybody. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 4. Isaiah chapter 4, four verse 1. This is where I get the title, Seven Women and One Man. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own food and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by your name to take away our reproach. Let me read that again. And in that day, seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own food and wear our own apparel. Only let us be called by your name to take away our reproach. It says, when it says in that day, it means in the last days. That's what it's referring to. In the last days, there's going to be seven women. They want to be called by that guy's name. But saying, I don't want the clothing that you have for me. I don't want the food that you have for me. I only want to be called by your name. Seven women, one man says, we will eat our own food. We wear our own clothing, but we still want to be called by your name. When you get married, whose name do you take? Your husband's last name, right? We take our hu or we take the husband. The woman takes the husband's last name. My wife is Mrs. Lozano, right? When you get married, you take the husband's last name. When we get married to Christ, whose name do we take? God's name. 
We are called Christians or followers of God, right? We're called spiritual Israelites, spiritual Hebrews. We take on the name of Christ. That's why we are not to take the Lord's name in vain by how we live. If you're living a rebellious life, you're taking the Lord's name in vain. You're misrepresenting His name. So these women want to take this man's name, but don't want to follow that man. I'm going to step out of my comfort zone and say this. In these last days, even preachers say, the woman has the same role as a husband. According to the Bible, no it doesn't. The husband is still the spiritual leader. The husband is still um, the head of the household. The woman is to follow. God put it that way for a reason. Amen? Doesn't mean that she's to be mistreated. It doesn't mean that she don't have a voice. It doesn't mean that she don't have a say-so. It just means that he has the final answer. But the woman can come, the, the wife can come to her husband and say, Maybe you should do this a certain way. I just wanted to put my input. And the husband could say, you know what? Let me pray about it. And you might be right. The wife still has a voice. She is not to be taken advantage of. She is never to be beaten. If a husband beats his wife, that's worse than anything. Amen? So these women want to take be called by this guy's name, but they want to follow their own thing. That's called, what's it called, um, when the women's movement happened, what was that, in the 70s? I'm not sure what year it was, but it was back then. And um, I'm trying to find the word independent. Women say, a lot of women say today, I'm an independent. I'm an independent woman. I don't need a man. Amen? That's what a lot of people say today. But we all need to be, we all need somebody over us. As a wife, they need their husband. But as a husband, we need to be humbled before the Lord. Us as men, we need to come before the Lord and say, Lord, humble me. Help me to be that man that you want me to be. Amen? But today, a lot of people say, or a lot of women say, I'm an independent woman. I don't need anybody. Amen? But we need what God formed. We need what God instituted from the beginning, marriage between a woman and a man. Amen? That's what the Bible says. These seven women are represented in the book of Revelation. Let's go to the book of Revelation, but keep it marked right here in Isaiah chapter 4. Revelation chapter 1, verse 4. Before we read that, remember a woman represents what? A church. So these seven women, or these seven different types of churches want to be called by this man's name but they want to do their own thing the book of Revelation chapter 4 I mean chapter 1 verse 4 says John to the seven churches who are, are in Asia grace to you peace from whom him is and who and oh, I'm sorry let me read that again <laughs> I get tongue twisted grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come and from the seven spirits who are before his throne so here God is revealing to John the revelator because John wrote the book of Revelation God is talking to John and saying, here is the spirit of the seven churches. Alright? In the last days, there's seven 
churches throughout history, seven different types of churches have played out. In Revelation chapter 1, or in chapter 2, verse 1, it says, To the angel of the church in Ephesus write, These things say, He who holds seven stars in his right hand, and he walks in the midst of the seven golden lampstands. So the church of Ephesus, that's the first church. And I'm not going to go through all of them, but it says in Revelation chapter 2, verse 8, the second church. Revelation 2, 12, the third church. Revelation uh, chapter 2, verse 18, the fourth church. Revelation chapter 3, verse 1, the fifth church. Revelation chapter uh, 3, verse 7, the sixth church. And then Revelation chapter 3, uh, verse 14 is the seventh church. Guess what church period are we living in? Seven. We're living in the last church period. Symbolically and spiritually, we're living in the last church, which is church number seven. Let's read that. Revelation chapter 3, verse 14. But I have a few things against you because you have... There are those who hold the doctrine of Balaam and thought Balak to put stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat the things sacrificed to idols and to commit sexual immorality. Actually, I was reading the wrong verse. <laughs> but actually, that applies to it as well. Verse 14, chapter 3. And to the angel of the church of Laodiceans write, These things says, Amen, and faithful and true witness be the beginning of the creation of God. I know your works, for you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold or hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth, says the Lord. And it continues to say, Laodicea means the sleepy, the sleepy church. Last night we were, uh, me and my wife, we were sitting there on the couch and we were going through our phones and we were watching different videos and stuff. And I began to get sleepy because the night before I had stayed up really late doing schoolwork because I'm going to college and I've been doing uh, schoolwork, homework. And um, so I was trying to stay up but I kept falling asleep. You know, it was only what, nine o'clock? It was pretty early. <laughs> I guess I'm getting old. But I was falling asleep, and no matter how hard I tried, I couldn't stay awake. Laodicea means the sleepy church. Because throughout history, different types of churches have played out throughout history. You had the you had the different churches that rebelled against God in different ways, right? But it says that in the last days the church is sleeping. When you're asleep, you're not aware of what's going on, right? So God is saying, "Wake up. Wake up and look around you because I'm about to come." And you're not taking things seriously. All you're doing is sleeping. I've asked you to stay up and pray. I've asked you to stay up and read the Bible. I've asked you to stay up and preach the gospel. Tell other people about God. But what are you doing? You're doing everything else. And you're, you're in a, spiritually asleep. You're spiritually dead. You're spiritually asleep. You remember when Jesus uh, was here and he was going to be taken to be crucified? But before he did that, what did Jesus tell his disciples? He goes, I'm going to go over here to the garden. The garden of Gethsemane? Is how you say it? Because I don't know how you say it. The garden? He says, I'm going to go pray over here. Because it was heavy on his heart. Jesus knew that he was about to go die. If you know that you're about to go die... 
I'm sure you would be very, it would be pressing on your heart, right? Jesus knew how important it was for his disciples to pray for him. And Jesus says, I'm going to go pray over here. The disciples didn't understand. Jesus kept telling them that I'm going to be, I'm going to be crucified one day. The disciples didn't understand that. They didn't understand. No matter, I know my wife sometimes tells me, she's like, I already told you that before. I'm like, oh. <laughs> you know, sometimes we tell our children something and they don't hear you, right? And you tell them again, you tell them again. And then they finally come to you like, did you tell me this? Like, yeah, like 10,000 times. <laughs> but Jesus told the disciples, I'm going to be crucified one day. You know, and I'm going to, I'm going to, but it's, it's for the kingdom of God. It's for you to be saved. Amen? But they didn't understand. The disciples thought that Jesus was going to take over Rome and get, a, and get rid of all the Romans and establish back the new Jerusalem. So when they saw Jesus dying on the cross, they, they kind of got scared and ran away too. Like, well, that's what they're going to do to our master, our Messiah. What are they going to do to us? But Jesus told them, I'm going to go over here and pray. I want you to pray for me. Jesus went over here and prayed. He, went, he got away. He went over here to the garden. And it says that he was praying so hard that blood was coming out of his eyes. You know that it's scientifically proven that blood can come out of your eyes? If you're crying that much. If you're so deep into... In your, in your prayer or your crying. Because Jesus knew what he was about to go do. That's why he said, Lord, if there's any other way, please, Lord, I don't know. You know, if there's any other way, he's praying to God the Father, right? He said, if there's any other way, please let this cup pass before me. But then he realized there was no other way. He says, but not my will, Lord, your will. How many of us pray like that? How many of us say, Lord, I would like to do this, or I would like to do that. But if this is not what you want me to do, you do what you want me to do, Lord. If you don't want me to move to this house, or buy this house, or this car, I understand, Lord, you have something different for me. Or whatever it is, right? Any measure decisions. So, so he said, okay, Lord, I will follow you all the way to the cross. How many of you are willing to follow Jesus Christ all the way to the cross? In this last days, we're going to be facing those things. We're going to be facing persecution. What if they, God forbid, what if God say, if you don't, I mean, what if the devil and the enemies come and say, if you don't follow me the way we're telling you, we're going to take your children away. How strong is your faith right there? That's scary. Those things are going to happen. That's why the Bible says that woe to those women in the last days that have babies. That's in the book of Matthew. And it was referring to the destruction of Jerusalem at that time. But it's also double prophetic for us in the last days. So how strong is your faith? Yes, they might take your children away. Yes, they might cut your head off. They might throw you in prison. But guess what's next? Heaven. Guess what's next? After Jesus comes back in the clouds, heaven will be reunited with our kids. We'll be reunited with our family. So we must build our faith strong. Amen? So Jesus gets done praying. He says, okay, Lord, I'll go to the cross and die. It's not going to be easy, but I'll do it. Jesus comes back. Do you think the, the disciples were praying? He come back, they're all taking a nap. They're all asleep. And Jesus gets a little upset with them. You know, God would get upset sometimes. He say, wake up. I told y'all to stay up and pray for me. Y'all can't even do it for an hour. I told y'all to stay up and pray. And immediately after that, that's when the Roman soldiers came and took Jesus away. We are to be awake in these last days. Be awake. Don't be Laodicea. It says that in the last days, 
We're in the seventh church. We're in the seventh church, spiritually speaking. The majority of Christians are asleep. We're asleep. So these seven women are representative of the seven churches, of the seven different churches in history. It goes all the way from the beginning of Adam and Eve, in the middle of the persecution and the Roman Empire and all those things. Babylon, Middle Persia, Greece, Rome. And then the split of Rome into the ten kingdoms of Europe. And then Europe, later on, coming near the United States and then coming to Mexico, Latin America, and then around the world. I mean, throughout history, study history. Study history and the Bible will come alive. But these seven churches have played a role throughout history. We're now in the last church. So these seven women are representative of these seven churches. We're on the church number seven. The majority of Christians are asleep today. Well, you might say, well, they're, no, they're not. I see them at church jumping up and down and uh, praising God with all kinds of instruments. They're not asleep. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. You know why? They're leaving this out. They're leaving the Bible. Lord, I want to praise you. I want to sing for you. I want to shout, which there's nothing wrong with that. But that's all they want to do. They don't want to be told how to live a holy life. Right? How many of your children, when they're in trouble... Oh, I love you, Mama. Or oh, they tell you something very lovely that kind of breaks your heart. But they're just trying to be excused from their punishment, right? <laughs> Sometimes we do the same thing as adults. We want to praise God. We want to be called Christians. We want to say we're followers of God. But we don't want to listen to Him. We don't want Him to show us what we must let go of in our lives. Amen? One man. So now that we know who these women are, these seven women that say, we want to be called by your name, but we want to eat our own food, and we want to wear our own clothing. In a minute, I will tell you what the food represents and what the clothing represents. We already know these seven women represents Christianity, or those that claim to follow God. That's what these seven women are throughout history. Now, let's go to Matthew chapter 16, verse 27. Who is this one man that these followers of God claim to be? Who is this one man they want to be called by? Matthew chapter 16, verse 27. Make sure I read the right verse this time. <laughs> Matthew 16, verse 27. For the Son of Man will come in glory of His Father, which with His angels, and, we, and He will reward each according to His words. For the Son of Man. This man is Jesus Christ. Amen? Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. First Timothy chapter two verse five. First Timothy chapter two verse five says, For there there is for there is one God and one mediator between God and man, that man Christ Jesus. The man Christ Jesus. So who is this one man? Jesus Christ. Amen? Yeshua, right? Yeshua, Jesus Christ, is this one man. Now the picture is starting to fall together, right? So these seven women tell this man, we read in the book of Isaiah, right? It says, 
We want to be called by your name to take away our reproach, but we want to wear our own clothing and we want to eat our own food. We don't want you to provide for us. We only want to be called by your name. We want to be known by your name. So these people that claim to be followers of God says to Jesus, we want to be called by your name, Jesus. We want to be called Christians. We want to be called followers of God. But we don't want to listen to you. We want to do our own thing. Right? Isn't that what's going on today? If you think about it, in the majority of Christian churches, I don't care what Christian church you go to, they want to be called Christians. We go, they go to church either Saturday or Sunday, all the time, and they say, I'm a Christian. I love God, and I know God loves me, right? But the minute you show them from the Bible, hey, you know, the Bible says we shouldn't talk this way. We shouldn't talk in a perverted way. The Bible says, abstain from any form of evil, anything that's demonic. The minute he shares anything like that with somebody, don't judge me. Only God can judge me. Right? But did you know God is using you to reveal to them what God is trying to tell them? Amen? And of course we are to do it in a loving attitude. Amen? We see that in the Christian churches today. Laodicea. And we just read in the book of Revelation that it says that people are lukewarm. God is saying, if you're going to drink water or tea, make sure it's cold or hot. <laughs> I don't want it lukewarm. How many of y'all, I mean, not that we should drink caffeine or coffee, but how many of y'all like lukewarm coffee? It's nasty, right? God says, that's what's wrong with Christianity in the last days. Laodicea. We are lukewarm Christians. We are lukewarm. We're not either cold or hot. What does it mean cold or hot? Cold mean, meaning don't follow God at all if you don't want to follow me. Warm means, or hot means, I'm sorry, hot means follow me all the way. I want all of you, not just a little bit of you. I want all of you. Amen? I don't want to be in the middle. One minute, I love God. Let's go to church. God loves you. The next minute, let's go party it up. Let's do these drugs. Let's do these things. Let me go cheat on my boyfriend or husband or, or wife or whatever. We know what sin is. I don't have to tell you guys. God says, don't be lukewarm. Don't be in the middle. Either be cold or hot for me, because I will spit you out of my mouth. That's what God says. I will spit you out of my mouth. I will reject you. When I come, during judgment day, and judgment is taking place right now, but during the ultimate final judgment, God will say, you look warm. You weren't hot all the way for me. I want you to follow me all the way. I want your whole heart. I want all of you. What does the food represent? Matthew chapter 4, verse 4. I'm not going to read it, but it says that man shall not live by bread alone. Amen? By, by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. What is that? The Bible. You know when they had the tabernacle and when they had the, the showbread, they, the bread represented the, the word of God, the Bible. That's what God gave us, the Bible. John chapter 6, 32 through 35. Jesus says, I am the bread of life. Amen? 1 Corinthians chapter 10, 2 to 4 says that the word of God represents spiritual food. We just read in Matthew that says, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. We all need food to live, right? If you, don't, if you stop eating for so long, you're going to die. 
Well, the Bible is saying that if you stop eating the spiritual food, the Bible, the Word of God, you're going to die. Meaning die like spiritually, not like fall over dead. But you're going to die meaning you're dead. You may say you're a Christian, but you're a dead Christian. You're not on fire for the Lord. So we need to read the Bible every day. Even if it's 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Read the Bible every day. If you don't understand it, ask God, show me. But a lot of us, we, we don't have patience. We want to learn it all in one day. We're all in one week. No, but the more you read, the more you learn. The more you read, the more you learn. That's why me and my wife, we do Bible studies. If you ever want to do Bible studies. And if not, there's some amazing uh, uh, YouTube videos that I can recommend. Don't believe every single thing that you, you watch on TV either, though. That has to do with Christianity. We must be careful. But we have to go to the Word of God. We are to read the Bible every day. That's, this is our spiritual food. Amen? John chapter 1, verse 1 and 14 says that the Bible represents Jesus. Y'all can write these Bible verses down. It says that the Word of God, the Bible, represents Jesus. Every time you're reading the Bible, you're reading about who Jesus is and who God the Father is. Amen? The clothing. What does the clothing represent? Revelation chapter 7 verse 9. Let's go there. I've been, I've been told before, you're kind of a boring preacher, Juan. <laughs> You're kind of a boring preacher, Pastor Flacco, or whatever. Because you use the Bible for your sermons. You don't excite us. I didn't I didn't think I was an entertainer entertainer, did you, Brother Tate? But you're alright. I'm alright. <laughs> <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with being loud and, and getting people excited. We are to do that the best that we can. But most importantly, teach what's in the Bible. Because you picture Jesus rolling on the floor when he was preaching. Do you picture Jesus, let's raise the roof up. <laughs> do you picture Jesus doing all those things? Do you, do you picture Jesus getting his jacket and you're healed, you know? Right. What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? Yes, slain in the Spirit. The Bible doesn't talk about slain in the Spirit. We are to be careful, friends. That's why I'm saying in these last days, most Christians are asleep because they're not reading the Bible. They think they're awake because as loud as they can be, but they're not. They're asleep. Revelation chapter 7, verse 9. That's why I try to use as much scripture as I can to preach my sermons. That's what we should be doing. Revel, uh, Revelation chapter 7 verse 9 says, After these things I looked and behold a great multitude which no one could number. For all the nations, tribes, peoples, and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands. You know what this clothing represents? It's the purity and the righteousness of God. This is talking about when we all make it to heaven. John pictured, or God is showing John, all the people that made it to heaven. And they're all dressed in white robes. White represents purity, right? But it's the righteousness of God, and not our own righteousness. We need His righteousness. We need His robe to make it to heaven. We need His clothing, right? Not our own clothing. I mean, I want to go to heaven in a zoot suit. It'd be nice. <laughs> but that's not going to get me to heaven. I know Brother Tate's always dressing in nice suits. But no matter how nice you dress, that's not what's going to get you into heaven. God is saying, I want to give you my clothing. 
I want to give you my righteousness. I want to cover you with my righteousness. Which is that white robe. Right? And that's when we, when we all go to heaven, we're all going to have His clothing. We're going to have His white robe. That's why when you see marriages today, they dress in white. The woman dresses in white. Because we got it from the Bible. Amen? Galatians chapter 3 verse 27, it says we put on Christ. Can I go over here and put on Christ? Literally, no. But when we accept God into our life, we put on Christ. Spiritually, you're covered by the blood of Jesus. Spiritually, you're covered by His righteousness. If you go directly to God the Father on your own, did you know that you could be struck dead? Did you know you could be struck dead? Why? Because you're full of sin. I'm full of sin. If I go directly to God the Father and try to talk to Him, I could be struck dead because I'm full of sin. Because light and darkness cannot be together at the same time. Righteousness and sin cannot be together at the same time. So you know what Jesus does? We go to Jesus and say, God, forgive me. And Jesus says, I will cover you with my blood. I will forgive you of all your sins and I will make you pure as snow. That's what the book of Proverbs says, or Psalms, I'm not sure. It says, I will make you pure as snow. Pure, white, clean, right? Now, when I go before the Father, He sees you as if you've never sinned. Why? Because Jesus Christ forgave you of all your sins. So in order for us to go to heaven, we need the righteousness of God. We need to ask God for forgiveness and repent of our sins. Repent meaning we don't want to do those things anymore. Right? So we read that the food represents the Bible. Right? We just read that the clothing represents the righteousness of God. But what about the name? John chapter 8, verse 5 and 8 says, Jesus says, I am. And you remember the Jewish people wanted to kill him because the title I am is a title for God. Right? But the Jewish people did not believe that Jesus was God. But Jesus said, I am. And uh, they, were, they were ready to kill him. So the name that these women want to take is the name of Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. His name saves us. Let's read it. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. Matthew chapter 1 verse 21. And he shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. The name of Jesus saves us. Amen? We are to call on the name of Jesus every time. Amen? And God will forgive us. God's name is powerful. If you're ever being attacked by demonic forces, call out on the name of Jesus. Amen? It says that the devils flee because they cannot stand the presence of God in the name of Jesus. And 1 John chapter 3, verse 23 says, Believe in His name. Amen? So let's go back to the book of Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. Isaiah chapter 4, verse 1. It says, And in that day seven women shall take hold of one man, saying, We will eat our own food and wear our own clothing or apparel. 
Only let us be called by your name to take away our reproach or our sin. That's what they're saying. Now the story makes sense, right? In that day, meaning in the last days, people that claim to be Christians say, we want to be called Christians. We want to be called by your name, Jesus Christ. But we want our own food and our own clothing. We don't want your word telling us what's right and wrong. We don't want your righteousness. We can just be good to everybody. And that should save us. That ain't going to save anybody. Amen? We need Jesus Christ in our life. You know, uh, even people that don't follow God can be some of the nicest people in the world. Sometimes they're even nicer than Christians, right? <laughs> but you being nice, is that going to save you? No. We need Jesus Christ. I'm almost done here, guys. This is a very important message for all of us. That we are not just to claim Jesus Christ. We are not just to take His name and be like these rebellious women that say, I want your name, but I don't want anything you have for me. I don't want to follow you. I don't want to submit myself to you, Lord. Right? I don't want to submit my whole life to you. I still want to do what I'd like to do. The Bible says, kill your flesh daily. It means the desires, your own desires. And we all have different desires. Ask God to, to give you a pure heart, right? We don't want to be like these women that symbolically represent God's people. Because if we do, this is what would happen. Matthew chapter 7, verse 22. Let's go to Matthew chapter 7, verse 22. I got this verse and one more Bible verse. Matthew chapter 7, verse 22. Let's all turn there. Let's read this carefully. Matthew chapter 7, verse 22 and 23. Many will say to me in that day. You see how it says the same thing in that day? And we just read about the seven women. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, this is Jesus saying this, I will tell them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. This is talking about when Jesus shows up in the clouds and is coming to take his people home. Did you know that every eye will see Jesus coming in the clouds? There's no secret rapture. There's no rapture. There's only the literal second coming of Christ. When Jesus comes in the last days, he's going to break through those clouds and everybody will be like, oh, you know, he is real, right? Jesus is real. He's coming. And it's talking to those that claim to be followers of God. It's saying, Lord, Lord, we're excited you're here. You're coming. Lord, Lord, we're ready. We're ready to go with you. We prophesied in your name. We cast out demons. And we did many wonderful works for you. We Many wonders for you. We fed the homeless. We had our church full. We had an awesome praise and worship music. We were lifting your name on high every, every Saturday or every Sunday. We were doing all those things for you, Lord. We're ready to go with you. And then Jesus says, I never knew you. Depart from me or get away from me. You who practice what? Lawlessness. Lawlessness is the opposite of God's law. In these last days, 99% of Christian churches don't want nothing to do with God's law. 
You try to tell them about the Sabbath, that it's the fourth commandment. Oh, that's for the Old Testament people. That's not for us today. We are not under the law, but we're under grace. That's what they'll tell you. Try to share the Sabbath commandment with somebody, any other Christian. And that's what they're going to tell you. We're not under the law, but we're under grace. But as I explained a couple of Saturdays ago, we're only under the law when we break the law. When we ask God for forgiveness, He gives us grace so we're no longer under the law. But that is not permission for us to keep breaking the law. I hope that makes sense to y'all because I don't know if I can repeat that again. <laughs> God's grace. He gives us grace for breaking His law. Amen? But... The Bible tells us clearly, do we continue to sin because we're under grace? The Bible says, God forbid, we establish the law. We need His whole law. We need His Ten Commandment laws. Amen? All ten of them. All ten of them. Because a lot of us that keep the Sabbath holy, we think that's the only commandment we should keep. And we forget there's nine other commandments. Right? Right? Thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal. But it says that in the last days, people don't care for God's law anymore. We need His law. Last Bible verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. There's hope. We don't have to fall in that category of these seven women, right? We don't have to be the Laodicea church. We don't have to be the lukewarm church. We don't have to be the seven women that want to take hold of this man's name, but do their own thing. Instead, Lord, I want the bread that you have for me. Instead, Lord, I want the clothing you have for me. Amen. Lord, speak to me. Reveal to me what you have for me in your word in the Bible. I want to be, I want to follow you as much as I can. There's a hymn that says, I want to be a Christian in my heart, right? Help us to be, represent, help us to represent God in everything that we do, right? Do people look at you today and say, wow, you know, there's a change in you. Or they still see the same old you. If they still see the same old you, get on your knees and pray and go to the Bible every day and ask God to change you. That's why it says, if, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. As long as you re remain in that relationship with Christ every day, you're not going to be perfect, but you will become changed. You will be a, a, a transformer, right? <laughs> you will be transformed in more and more into the image of God. So spend daily time eating the bread of God and wearing His clothing. Let us surrender all we have to Him and let us become a new creation. How many of y'all want to follow God all the way? All the way. I pray that this message has blessed you today, and I hope that it has touched you, and, um, and share it with others. If you ever want my sermon notes, um, I can make you copies, and you can share it with others. You know, we don't have to all be, uh, we don't all have to know the Bible very well, like, well, sometimes we look at other people like, man, how do they know their Bible so well? You don't have to be that uh, gifted in doing that. If, if a message touched you, I'll make copies for you. You can share this same message with somebody else. 
or if uh, anything or anybody else has shared anything with you, you can share YouTube videos with other people. There's a lot of things that we can do. We're not. There's nothing that should stop us from sharing the gospel with others. Amen. Let us pray. Let us stand as we pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for, for this time. Thank you for the Sabbath day. For us to uh, come apart from the world and spend more time with you. For us to deepen our relationship with you, Lord. And Lord, as we depart, help us to, be, um, to carry this, this words with us as how we are to represent you as a, as a Zion, as the woman of God. As your church, Lord, help us to represent you everywhere we go, Lord. Help us to be fed by your bread, your word, and help us to also be covered by your righteousness, by your robe, Lord. We don't want to be rebellious. Instead, we want to be submissive to you, Lord, and follow you no matter what, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Give us strength as we carry through the remainder of the Sabbath and through the remainder of the week. And we thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. This concludes our service. And uh, next Saturday, like I said, I'm going to share this wonderful sermon about music. So I invite somebody, and we will have Children's Church next Saturday. God bless you.